Greetings to all our friends in Japan. This is Andy Smith from Dumont Winery. We realize a lot has changed around the world, and we hope most importantly that you're staying well and able to be with your families right now. Uh, we wish we, we were with you, but we are in spirit, if not in person. Fortunately, in California, it's spring in the vineyards. The vines are just waking up from their winter dormancy. The cycle of growth is happening again. And it's great to be out in the vineyards, getting lots of fresh air and being in nature. I think during this difficult time, it's a very uh, appropriate time to uncork special bottles. And so we want to make it easy for you to, to enjoy your wines and to understand them. So we're going to do a little tasting in a minute uh, and discuss the wines. Cheers. We're going to taste some of my favorite wines from recent vintages and I'll talk you through the wines and tell you a little bit about the vineyards, what I think of the wines and the style and maybe give you a couple of suggestions to, for food and wine pairings. So the first wine we have is our 2016 Highland Divide Chardonnay. So 2016 was a, a very typical California vintage. The wines are naturally very rich. Uh, they have lots of body and depth to them, a real deepness of flavor, um, but also very good acidity. So you shouldn't be afraid to match these wines with food. They, they're they're de dense and full flavored, but they've got nice freshness to them as well. So the first wine is the 2016 Highland Divide Chardonnay. Now this comes primarily from a, a, a great vineyard, it's called Morelli. Uh, it's very close to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, very high elevation. The vineyard's at about 400 meters elevation and about uh, eight kilometers from the ocean. So it's quite an extreme area for California. Um, the soil is very sandy and, and that gives the wine a real linear, focused character. So my tasting, very rich nose. There's lots of uh, deep, ripe citrus oil aromas. Uh, a little bit of spicy, savory character, uh, a little bit of brioche. On the palate, those citrus oil flavors come through very strongly. Lemongrass, lime juice, a little bit of baked apple richness. Uh, the wine is dynamic and flavorful. It's very long on the palate, very, very fine acidity. Uh, it's a drawn out, long arc of flavor. Um, and it finishes very clean with a nice sort of saline edge to it. Really beautiful, complex, very serious Chardonnay. Highland Divide refers to this area in the Green Valley. The, so that's the coolest southwest part of the Russian River Valley. Um, and it's a little bit like Burgundy where the top of the vineyard or the top of the ridge, the hillside, uh, we, they find the Premier Cruz, and at the bottom they find the Village Wines, but in the middle is where you find the Grand Cruz. And we find that a little bit in the Green Valley. Uh, the best vineyards, the ones that I like the most, come from that middle section. I call that the Highland Divide. And it's a, typically between about 100 and 300 meters elevation. So that's the Highland Divide Chardonnay. The second wine comes from our estate vineyard. This is the 2016 Dumas Estate. This is a very special vineyard. This is my pride and joy. So I planted this vineyard in 2003. And, and at that time I wanted to do something very special, truly unique. So we planted it at a very high vine density. The typical modern vine density in California is about 1,000 plants per acre. I wanted to do something unique, so I planted it at 3,600 vines per acre. And so that equates to close to 9,000 vines per hectare. So very similar to a European Burgundian density. And what that does, it has a very strong mark or very strong signature on the wine. The wine's leaner than the first wine. It's uh, less fruity, a little bit more savory, a little bit more complex. A wine that ages extremely well. So here it's very saline, almost briny, a little bit of oyster shell character, a little saltiness to the wine, less richness of fruit. The wine's quite upright. Oh, 
really delicious. Again, it's what I would call a low fruit style. So there's not a, a lot of overt uh, stone fruits or peach or orange. It's very citrusy still, kind of green apple maybe, um, but very, very long, very precise, really focused wine. Um, as, you, as, as the wine goes through, along the palate, it's very dynamic, it's very straight, it's very clean, um, and a real sense of uh, structure to the wine. There's some nice sort of savory herbal elements, maybe a little sweet sage, uh, little exotic characters, maybe a little bit of saffron. Um, quite an unusual style for California. Very coastal style. So this, again, this, this vineyard is maybe uh, 12 kilometers from the ocean. Lower lying, but very uh, lean, sandy soils, which often give the wine that real focus and direction that we love so much. Here the acidity is very, very high. So this is a wine you can age for many, many years. Uh, this is 2016, it tastes very, very young still. So don't be afraid to age this for easily another decade. Um, really quite, quite unique Californian coastal style of Chardonnay. Really quite special, uh, very unusual. So the third wine I have is a Pinot. This is also the 2016 vintage, and it's the Highland Divide Pinot. So again, we're looking at that middle layer uh, in the Green Valley area, uh, the middle part of the ridge line, uh, where it's very foggy, but the soils are quite shallow, they're quite lean, and so we get very, very small grapes uh, with nice richness and thick skins, but lots of aromatic power as well. So this wine is particularly aromatic. The aromas just really jump out of the glass. Red fruits, black fruits, some nice savory characters, a little bit of that sort of uh, herbal element that's quite intriguing, quite nice. Yeah, really beautiful. A little black raspberry character. Mm. On the palette, oh, that's beautiful. This really shows the vintage. 2016, there's a lot of depth of fruit to the wine. Um, but the wine is it's quite dry. It's not sweet at all. Um, it's not too ripe. Uh, there's a real uh, complexity to the wine, a lot of savory characters coming through. Uh, in, uh, in France, they like to use this term sous-bois, means undergrowth, or mushroomy, or uh, truffly. Um, and I find that in this wine already. Alongside some very nice dark red and some real black fruits, a little bit of blackberry, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, cassis even. Um, typical for our region is black cherry characters. I find a little bit in this wine, but uh, maybe a little bit more of that dark raspberry character. Uh, really beautiful wine. Again, very, very young. This, this primarily comes from our estate vineyard, so it's high density vineyard planting. Um, so there's, there's not a lot of direct sunshine on the grape clusters as they, uh, as they evolve towards ripening. And that helps retain some of those savory elements that, that are so nice in Pinot Noir. Not too fruity a wine. Um, really drinking very, very nicely. But again, a wine you can age for many, many years. Easily 12 to 15 years. And during that time, the, the primary fruit uh, and the aromatics will sort of fold and melt away into the wine. And we'll get something that's a little bit more... Uh, mushroomy, let's say, truffly, uh, more of this sort of undergrowth, uh, mossy character, uh, really pretty. You know, when Pinot Noir is good and mature, it's the most thrilling wine in the world, in my opinion. And I think that's where we'll find this wine in five to ten years' time, um, really drinking beautifully today. Yeah, beautiful. I have some pairing suggestions for these three wines. So, for the two Chardonnays, uh, my friends in Japan recommend uh, tempura shrimp and seafood in particular, like a chicken white stew, maybe with a bechamel sauce, and uh, this Chinese dish ebi mayo, um, and maybe some grilled alf alf excuse me alfonsino uh, with a miso sauce. So, uh, and then and then the Pinot Noir. Uh, yakitori, of course, 
um, unagi, absolutely, and maybe some tuna with sashimi, tuna, sash, tuna sashimi on rice, um, and some grilled salmon. So those are some quick recommendations for food and wine pairings. Again, 2016, really a beautiful vintage. Uh, you should be able to find these wines now in the market, and uh, they are wines that can be enjoyed right now for their richness um, and power. Um, but if you age them for five years in the whites, maybe five to seven to ten in the Pinot, uh, you're going to find tremendous complexity come out. The wines are very young still, um, but um, they have a long life ahead of them. So now we're going to move on to Cabernet. Uh, I've made Cabernet in Napa Valley for 25 years now, so I have a lot of experience. Um, we try to make Cabernet in a relatively restrained style, maybe a little bit more Bordelais in style, not too overtly Californian. We don't want the, we don't want the wines to be too big and too rich or, or any sense of heaviness at all. These, these wines both come from organically farmed vineyards. The first one is a very special vineyard, very famous vineyard. This is the Montecillo vineyard. It's actually a Sonoma County wine. And in Sonoma County, we have this wonderful old historical appellation called Moon Mountain. It's a, it's a mountainous area. It's at about uh, 800, 600 to 800 meters elevation, overlooking the Sonoma Valley. This is the most, well, one of the most famous vineyards in the appellation. It's called Montecillo. It was planted in 1964, so it's quite historical, quite old now. Uh, the vines are organically farmed. The soil there is extremely dark red volcanic soil. Um, there's a lot of organic material in the soil, so the vines are extremely healthy, despite being over 50 years old. And uh, it's truly a vineyard that has a very strong signature on the wine. With this wine, we use very little winemaking technique in the cellar. It's just a very pure, natural expression of this one particular vineyard on the side of the mountain. So, 2014 vintage, Montecillo. Mm, just beautiful complexity, just comes out of the glass very readily. Red fruits, it's got this uh, really sort of dusty, slightly iron, ferrous quality to it, very unusual. Um, black fruits, uh, cassis, maybe bramble little blackberry character, um, very savory wine. Maybe has a little bit of kind of noble rusticity to it. Oh, it's a very warm character, very spicy aromas, really quite complex. This is not uh, this is not your normal, usual fruity California Cabernet. It's far more complex and far more noble than that. That's a wine to contemplate. Um, wow, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a very broad expression of Cabernet, very dynamic. Um, it puts a big smile on my face. I absolutely adore this wine. It's a, it's a very pure expression of Montecillo Vineyard, um, which is a vineyard that has this very specific, unique character. Uh, the wine is velvety, the tan is a very silky, there's nice fresh acidity to the wine, and it, the, the flavor is very long, it's very drawn out. There's this long arc of flavor, red fruits, black fruits, and then these savory elements. Really a beautiful wine. 2014 vintage, particularly elegant vintage. Uh, it's not a vintage that has the tannin structure of 13, or the, um, the acidity of 15, let's say, or the voluptuousness of 16. It's a vintage that's it, it, it's, its own thing. We don't need to compare it to other vintages. It's very elegant, very long, silky, very complex. This wine is drinking just beautifully now. You can enjoy this at, at almost its peak now, but this will age for many, many years. This, we can age this for 20 years, no problem. But um, as a stylist uh, and as a vintage, 2015, I think, as a vintage to enjoy early, or, or, you know, the wine is now five years old, 
I think you can enjoy it now. Um, absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love this wine. It has a, a romantic association for me because it's such a special place, um, such a unique place and historical place for California Cabernet. So that's the 2014 Montecito, very special wine. I think we made uh, 10 barrels of this, so 250 cases, very small production. And so here we have a Napa Cabernet. So this is a blended wine. This is a blend of two vineyards, um, both organically farmed, uh, both have uh, volcanic soils in cool climates. So the first vineyard we have here, uh, part of the blend is Meteor Vineyard, which is in Coombsville, in uh, southeast of Napa Valley. Um, it's a wonderful appellation. It's been planted for maybe 30 years. Um, Meteor is probably the most famous vineyard in that area. Um, it provides lots of floral elements to the wine, blue fruit, uh, real textural components. And we blend that with the uh, Ballard Vineyard on top of Spring Mountain. So this is a totally different area. It's above the town of St. Helena. The soil here is dark red volcanic soil, very similar to Montecio. Uh, the vineyard, uh, the Ballard Vineyard's at about uh, 400 meters elevation, um, looks over the Napa Valley, beautiful views, um, and surrounded by the redwood forest, so really special place. Anyway, so this is a blend of those two vineyards. And just beautiful floral, cassis, maybe some red currant fruit. Again, it has that iron ferrous character that's so unique. A little bit of pine needle, resiny characters. Uh, very complex nose. Dark, intense, mm, just really beautiful nose. On the palate, very, very young still, but very complex. Uh, this is a wine that's really beautifully integrated. There's a lot of individual flavors there, but they've all harmonized. They're all, they're all complete and they've come together just be beautifully. I, I sense red fruits, uh, but primarily dark fruit. Um, and again, this overwhelming sense of sort of forest floor, uh, mossy, little bit of uh, olive skin maybe, um, just very, very complex, black cherry for sure. Uh, super complexity to this wine. And it's a wine that's um, gonna drink well for many, many years, 20 years, absolutely no problem. There's a silkiness to the wine. It's very different to the first wine. I find the Montecio has more texture. The Napa Valley is a little bit more upright, uh, a little bit longer, very focused wine, uh, very dynamic wine. Um, mm. That's beautiful, really delicious. Uh, so in some wines, you set out on a journey and you have an idea of how you want the wine to communicate. And I can remember the start of the 2014 season thinking, you know, I really want to make this specific style of Cabernet. And I think we got pretty close. This is very close to my ideal um, way to express <coughs> excuse me, uh, Cabernet in these mountain areas in Napa Valley. It's very pure, it's very, uh, there's a delicacy to the wine, but a, but a depth to it as well. Um, it's quite Bordeaux-esque actually. Uh, there's, a, there's a low fruit style element to the wine. Um, it's by no means a fruity wine. Uh, there's tremendous savory complexity. So um, this is a wine that you can drink now, uh, but I would decant it, just decant it for an hour and then enjoy it over the evening. Um, but it, maybe, maybe most of the rewards on this wine are a few years in the future. Okay, so there's five different wines. Uh, they each have something different to say. They'll each pair with different foods. So I encourage you to experiment um, from beautiful vintages. 2016 here, powerful, rich, but with very good acidity. 2014 here. Very classic, elegant for Cabernet. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this chat and uh, I look forward to seeing you 
um, in Japan later in the year uh, where we can have some nice dinners and enjoy some of these wines and others uh, in person. Um, so best wishes to everybody, enjoy the wines and uh, see you soon. Many thanks. Ciao. Well, you can't make great wine unless you have great vineyards, like a chef, you know, you can't make a great dish unless you've got very good ingredients. Most vineyards have one or two defining characteristics or defining features. I would call that the vineyard signature. So we really try to draw out those very specific small nuances of each parcel. It is not just a vocation. It's very much who we are. It's, uh, it's our livelihood as well as our passion. It's what gets us up in the morning and, and what drives us to improve and to express ourselves. And that's the way it should be.